Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to another episode of Choose Happiness, Choose You. I'm Dr. Natalie, and I am here today to share with you some insights, some experiences, some of the things I've learned as I have created my happiness, as I help hundreds of others create their happiness. And what exactly this happiness means and how we can choose ourselves while we're creating happiness. Because very often, especially as women, we tend to focus on others. It's something that's probably ingrained in our nurturing DNA, or maybe it is just socially trained. And that is not to say that there are not some men who also have this feminine nurturing energy. However, at Win Win Women, we talk about to and with you all, ladies. So let's get started today. There are some things I really like to cover. You've seen some of my previous episodes where we tackle together some of the issues of the days whether it is how to celebrate, whether it is what kind of pet you like, whether all of those different aspects of how you begin to lay the path for what I call defining your happiness. You see, there are lots and lots and lots of ideas out there of what happiness is. We are continuously being presented with lots of ideas you know way back when i was growing up it was of course you know the family mom dad two kids a pet and a house preferably with a white picket fence something of that sort of course that also differs from culture to culture from country to country but we know that they are some of those ideals and we see them on TV, we see them in advertisement, we even see them in theaters. And yet the reality looks quite different. And I'm of course talking about the reality that we experience every day. How many times do we really still see mom, dad, two and a half kids, I always wonder about the half, and a pet and all of that. And even when we see it, does that mean that it is actually a happy family? Because you know there's a difference between appearance and real. And we won't get into what reality really means. That is for another show, another conversation. Because as a revolutionary rule breaker, I love talking about these things. And I can say that because been there, done that guiding lots of others through the process. And whenever we're looking at happiness, whenever we're looking at, you know, what do I want to create? It always, of course, starts here. You've heard me say this before, if you've watched any episodes, other than that, go back. So it starts here. Everything starts with you. Because the one person that's always going to be with you is, right, you. You're the one who you have to deal with pretty much 24-7, oh, 365 days per year, give or take a little bit, but you're always there with you, which is why it's important that we relearn how to choose ourselves, that we relearn what happiness means to us. And I always emphasize relearn. Since when we were kids, Remember that? You know, we were like teeny tiny. I mean, we owned the world. We told everybody what made us happy and what didn't. Whether it was um, the mashed broccoli we didn't want to eat and spit in somebody's face, whether it was the carrots we loved and devoured, whether we were unhappy, didn't feel good, and we screamed, or we found something so funny we just giggled and couldn't stop. So somewhere between child and now, we lost the art of choosing ourselves. We lost the art of knowing 
who we really are and what really makes us happy. Now, going back to what makes us happy real quick, what makes you happy, hopefully, is you. Knowing yourself. I always, always talk about know yourself, love yourself, embrace yourself, and that is going to lead to trust yourself. And with that, you have confidence. You can weather anything. Yet, in the process from child to now, some of that has been, let's say, buried. It has been buried by social conditioning, by the fact that there are roles we perform every day, often by choice, that there are things we just have to take care of, such as paying bills, doing the laundry, picking the kids up from school, lots of things. And so in that, in that routine, in that, in that process of being on autopilot, we sometimes forget who we are. We forget sometimes how, how brilliant we are. And so what we need to do is to regain that self-awareness and to, to detox some of that stuff that right now is keeping you stuck and not knowing yourself fully and entirely, not embracing yourself fully and entirely, and not loving yourself fully and entirely. And I can point out a number of instances when you and I are on the phone where you're probably going to say something that is clearly not very self-loving. However, we start here. So, Let's start the process of eliminating, clearing some of those things that got you to where you are right now and that can help you go to where you want to go. And it starts, believe it or not, with, you got it, happiness. Because happiness, here. And then you regain your power in order to allow more pieces in that add, add plus sign to your happiness. And when other things come on, you can say, mm, minus, I'm not going to take that. Thank you for the offer. But in order to make those clear decisions and to make them calmly and, and, and with a peaceful mind, you first need to know who you are, what you want. And today, of course, we're going to say, what do you want in regards to happiness? There are all these different pieces. I'm going to read you a quote real quick. Um, and it is in German, so um, I'm going to read it first in German, and then I'm going to try and translate it a little bit. Glücklich sein ist der neue Reichtum, innerer Frieden, der neue Erfolg, Gesundheit, der neue Wohlstand, und Freundlichkeit ist das neue Kuh. So happiness is the new wealth. Inner peace is the new success. Health is the new mm, well-being and middle-class income. And kindness is the new cool. I actually have a shirt that says kindness is the new cool. I have to wait until spring to wear it again because it's, it's not ice like this. All right. So those are current trends. And I happen to agree with them. You may or may not. In order to get there, we need to first identify our own abundance, our own wealth. And how do we create our own abundance, our own wealth? We define what happiness means to us. So do me a favor and close your eyes for a moment. I know this is not going to go down all the way, but close your eyes for a moment. And then when you're closing your eyes, just think for a moment. Maybe go back 10, 15 years. 
You don't have to be good in math to do this, but while you have your eyes closed, I want your eyes closed because then you can better focus, right? So with your eyes closed, just think of a moment like five, 10, 15 years ago, wherever you can grasp it, wherever you can grab it, think of a moment where you were really, really happy, carefree, happy. You were smiling, you were laughing. You don't have to do any of that loudly. You can just do it calmly on the inside, but you were peacefully enjoying bliss. Think about that for a moment. Was there a situation where you felt as if it was blissful? And I want you to grasp that, to grab it and to try and pull it to the forefront. And then when you have it, take a look at it. What are the parts that made that experience, that event or that time in your life that blissful or happy? Now, maybe you were filled with joy. Maybe you were, like I said, peaceful. So when you're thinking about this situation or event, this time, think about who was with you. Maybe you were all alone. Maybe there were one or two other people. Maybe it was a crowd of people. Just take a look at that situation. And yes, if you have something to write, you know, please feel free. Start writing things down while I'm talking. Okay. So start writing down who was there with you? Where was it? What exactly were you doing? And of course, I know that you may not have been doing anything. You may simply have been sitting on the beach watching a sunset. That is still doing something because you're actually being. So where were you? What was happening? Who was with you? What time of day was it? And when you have that written down, then the question is, can you replicate that? Because right now we have an anchor. We have an anchor for you where you can say, okay, this is a clear indication of me being blissful, joyful, happy, no cares in the world. I was fully and entirely in the moment. I was not thinking about doing the laundry. I was not thinking about paying a bill. I was blissfully in the moment. So if, you, if you're having that, what do you need to do to recreate that? And when I say recreate, I don't mean go back to the same place, try and have the same people there. That's not the, time, the, 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 the way that I'm referring to recreation. Because usually when we go back, it's not quite the same. And then we end up disappointed because we had high expectations. So that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that recreation in the internal sense. With this anchor right now, you have people whose company you enjoy, where you can be yourself, where you don't have to hold up appearances. And if you were in a crowd of people at that moment, it probably means that nobody was paying attention to anybody because it was just whatever was going on was just grabbing your attention. Now, I can think of uh, concerts, for example, you know, or, or, or theater performances. There are lots and lots of people, hundreds, thousands of people. And Everybody's focused on something there, not looking at their neighbors, not wondering how that neighbor's dancing, not wondering whether or not the neighbor's going to give a standing ovation or whether or not that other person's going to like the performance. No, we can be fully with ourselves, completely 
engaged and connected with the performance. Or maybe some of you I know are public personas, so maybe you were out giving a talk and you were interacting with the audience. And, and you weren't caring anymore about how your message came across. It was just downloading. And you just got the reason. That's another instance of you maybe being with lots and lots of people. Maybe they were just two or three of your friends and you were on the beach with a little fire and maybe having something like a little picnic. Maybe you were alone. So think about and write down, I'm, I'm serious, write down who was with you and what else was going on at that moment. When you write these things down, what will happen is that you can begin to trace it, that you can begin to recreate it, as I just mentioned, because you can now identify parts of what helps you be happy without thought process. Now, you also noticed, of course, that I was leading you to that by asking you to close your eyes and, in a sense, calming your mind and really focusing. Creating peaceful moments is crucial for us to know ourselves. And so, this little anchoring technique, if you will, is going to help you in many other instances. So after the show, for example, you know, we can talk about it more, but you can also simply do the same thing. Sit down and say, okay, when was I really happy? What was that moment? And you're going to create that peaceful minute where you can completely go within. Okay, that was just a little side note. When you're now looking at your notes, when you're now realizing, oh, this or this, then you are on your path. And it probably is a little bit of a longer and wider path with a bunch of detours. But then you are beginning to be on that path to rediscovering what happiness is for you. And when you're going within and beginning to define it for you, you will also at the same time, of course, need some support in that, but also you'll be able at the same time to release some of the need to compare with others, to comply with others. And of course, in the last few years, we've seen a lot more of the non-compliance to social conditioning. And now we've got you know, different kind of traditional families, for example, or traditional ways of life, for example. It has shifted, which shows us that there is an ongoing evolution. Now you have your anchor. Now you realize what some of the parts are that help you be happy. So now it's up to you to go down that path and say, okay, when I'm around these three people, I can be myself and I'm peaceful, I'm, I'm happy. When I'm around these three people, I'm stressed, I'm not so happy. Well, there are two things going on, of course. One is, if these three people have you feel stressed, it means one, you're not grounded and peaceful in yourself. And number two, these three people, let me be real, have no place in your life. Unless you want them to have the power over you to take away your happiness. And that, of course, goes back to you because you are in the middle. You are always there. You are the one constant when it comes to your happiness. And the question is, are you going to have and use the power that you have to create your happiness? Or are you going to let others decide it for you? For as women, there are a lot of um, 
pressures. Everybody they are. But I remember, you know, when I was younger, every friend that I had, every girlfriend that I had was starting to get married. And then there are the pressures, right? Like, oh, you should get married. Oh, you should get married. When are you going to get married? They're getting married. They're having a child. There's this, there's it. There are all these subconscious things going on. Well, I could compare myself to them or I could say, well, I'm okay here. I don't need this. I don't need that. It takes some time to get there. And yes, now I also got married and then you know, got divorced, all that good stuff. But it helped me. Those experiences happened for me so that I was then able to say, okay, I'm happy with me and my cats. I'm happy with me. And I now have and will use the power to allow in who adds to my happiness and to keep out those who don't. Because I went through the process of identifying which aspects make me happy. And in this process, you do need to take some time for you. I've talked about making time for you before. So as you are going back to trying to define what happiness means to and for you, you definitely need some time alone. You don't want to have ideas and run out and tell your friends, and then they're going to give you input, and then it gets convoluted. Okay? So you do need to make the time and look at this anchor that we've just created and say, okay, these are the pieces. What else? And the longer or the more often that you look at those notes, the more will come. Very often, things from your childhood will come up that maybe today you would go, hmm, I don't know. I'm not sure that that is really something that I was happy with. Well, never disregard it. I once had a, had a client and um, she wasn't sure what she wanted to do. She had quit one job. She was doing okay. And she was just like, okay, so hmm, I'm not sure what I really want to do. And then we did this exercise with the anchoring and everything. And she remembered a situation when she was younger where she loved knitting. She loved to knit, but she only loved to knit with the elders in her family and with the elders in a senior citizen home, for example. And I said, well, that's cool. Why don't you go back to doing that? And she looked at me and said, no, 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 I don't want to just spend my time with the old folks. I'm up. I said, well, but you were happy then. Do you at least want to try it? And she did, and she actually enjoyed it for a time because, remember, we can never recreate and go back completely. She was no longer a child. She was now old and had had her own experiences, but she did it for a while and said, yeah, that was actually, I was peaceful being with them, spending time with them. And that's really, really important. Happiness is that inner sense of peace and bliss. And yes, you may sometimes want to shout out and scream and go, yay, and dance around the house. Absolutely. That's all part of it. But you can only dance around the house if you know who you are and what you enjoy. So, your happiness. What are some of the things where you know that you're just internally smiling and grateful and blissful? With this anchor, it'll help you identify some others. And once you have identified them, just again, you know, put them down, write them down, and then see which parts of those can I now connect with. By going through this process, you are reclaiming some of your power that some of you have given away to others. And in this process, you still live in this world. So you still have to do some things that you may not necessarily enjoy or bring you happiness or add to your happiness or however you want to phrase it. Still going to have to pay some bills. You still may have to go to work. You still may have to cook. Whatever those things are that we do because we're in this world. And yet, 
in this process of identifying the aspects, the parts that you know add to your happiness and give you that sense of calm, it will directly impact your attitude about the things we need to take care of in the world we currently live in. It just happens. It's not magic. It's called connection. I talk a lot about connection because with that self-awareness comes that little bit of mental detox, which directly impacts your attitude, your perspective. And that is what creates that calm. And that calm is that very, very first step in reconnecting to all that we are, in choosing you. Because only when you're calm can you make clear decisions. And when you're calm and clear, you can make decisions and know that those decisions absolutely work for you. And you will make decisions with oh, more energy, more vitality. And you'll stand by them. It's like, oh, yeah, maybe it was a really, really interesting one. And I probably could have gone a different way. But apparently, this is an experience that I need to have right now because I made the decision based on the evidence and it works for me. And then, in spite of what life is throwing at you, for you, this inner calm and happiness is still there. It's still there. Because you have the power. Now, obviously, there is a bit more to the process, you know, going down this path. There are a lot more details that can be added to really, really, really make it stick, to really reconnect with those parts. And that connection is so crucial. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed or that there's a void somewhere in your life, that void is the connection. It's the connection to yourself. It's the connection to spirituality, the world that we can't grasp with our hands. And that can be filled by the reconnection with ourselves and specific systems and steps that help you and guide you along the way. You don't want to go down this path necessarily by yourself. And you certainly don't want to have your friends and family around who love you and like you just the way you are. And they're such wonderful people. Yet, you are now evolving. You are on a path that they may not yet be on, that they may not yet understand, because they may very well still live in the idea of, I need to nurture and care for others before me. And you have now taken the step of saying, I need to nurture and care for myself, re-identify myself, be happy myself, with me, for me, by me, in order to then be there for others. Because otherwise, what are you bringing to the table? If you're not happy in here, what are you bringing to the table when you hang out with others, when you meet others? Are you bringing stress? Are you bringing depression? Are you bringing anger, anxiety? That's not what I want for you. I want you to choose you and to choose happiness because that is why we're here. That is why you're here. And you deserve to be happy. You deserve to live your life your way. And I'd love to talk to you more about it. I do have my one-on-one -on -one transformational call in the win-win store. Feel free to check it out. Because I know there's more to you. I know. I can provide you some really, really important insights and action steps so that you have that inner calm, peace, and happiness and will be able 
to share that with whoever you want to. I'll see you later. <laughs>